What's going on, everybody? R. Joe Ochoa here from SB Nation's bloggingtheboys.com. Hope all is well wherever you are. We hope you're happy, safe, healthy, and that you have been enjoying the time since the 2021 NFL Draft. We are obviously very excited about the incoming Dallas Cowboys rookie class. Very excited to see how they are going to fit on this team, and more specifically excited to see how they are going to fit within this Dallas Cowboys defense. Now, you will recall, obviously, that the Cowboys, while they had 11 total selections in the draft, that eight of those picks were spent on the defensive side of the ball. Wednesday was a very busy day for the Dallas Cowboys in general, but again, specifically on defense. This was uh, a bit of a defensive purge. Shout out, of course, to our loyal viewer, Kevin Stewart, for coining the term. The Cowboys on Wednesday said goodbye to a number of players, and as you can see, Five of them of the six releases slash waves were defensive players. We've got Keeman Hall corner. We've got Ladarius Hamilton, the defensive end. We've got Walter Palmore, another defensive tackle. We've got Adam Redmond, the lone offensive player released by the Cowboys on Wednesday as a center. And then the two that kind of garnered the most attention, one of them, not so much, but in cornerback Savion Smith, but the big one, defensive tackle Antoine Woods. Now, Antoine joined the Cowboys in 2018, an undrafted free agent who originally signed with the Tennessee Titans when he did not get drafted, really carved a nice role for himself out with the Cowboys over the course of the last three seasons, was somebody who kind of was an afterthought. You know, if you rewind the clock a year ago, I know I said on a lot of our different shows on our podcast network that I wouldn't have been shocked if Antoine didn't make the Cowboys 53-man roster just because at the time, they obviously had gone out. They'd signed Gerald McCoy. They'd signed Don Tari Poe. They had Tristan Hill coming into his second year. I know people weren't high on him at this time a year ago, but he did play well before he got hurt. And of course, the Cowboys drafted Neville Gallimore in the third third round out of Oklahoma. And so it just kind of felt like Antoine was the odd man out. And really, he was uh, up until, you know, obviously the injury to Gerald McCoy, Dontari Poe not playing well, Tristan Hill getting hurt, as mentioned. And Antoine has just kind of always been that guy for the Cowboys, somebody who came in and did the dirty work and, and, and really did it in a lot of different in, uh, instances. The Cowboys did tender him as a restricted free agent this offseason. He really actually just signed the RFA tender like a few weeks ago. And so uh, we're obviously talking about a Dallas Cowboys team that walked away from the draft with two defensive tackles, which is why they went ahead. And look, the writing was on the wall and football is a business. And sometimes that is a really unfortunate reality of the way that it goes in the NFL. But when the Cowboys walked away with Osa Dig uh, Odigizua and with Quinn Bohana, it really felt obvious that Antoine Woods' time with the Dallas Cowboys was going to come to an end. But you look at this list and besides Antoine, there are two corners, obviously, and Keeman Hall, not a real big deal. But Savion Smith was a veteran and somebody who maybe... Um, you know, maybe it would have had a, a slight role on the Cowboys defense, but we're talking about, again, a Cowboys team that walked away with a number of defensive backs in the 2021 NFL draft. Obviously, Kelvin Joseph, their second round pick, their third round pick, Nashawn Wright. Uh, we've all had a lot of things to say about Nashawn Wright. And then obviously in the sixth round, Israel Mukuwamu, who might play safety, but overall is another defensive back. And so it really is just a matter of simple math. The Cowboys had to cut a number of players, as we just discussed, to get down to the 90 man roster limit. It's that time of year where teams can have 90 players on their roster, but that's it. And ultimately, these may or may not be the final 90. You know, sometimes there's one move, there's another move that sometimes happens that, uh, you know, kind of sends things in one direction, whatever. And, and maybe you kind of have plus minus players, but this is generally the group of players that is going to go to Oxnard, California for training camp with the Dallas Cowboys, the group that if there is a preseason, by the way, the 2021 NFL schedule will be released next Wednesday on, on May 12th. I almost said Monday 12th uh, on May 12th, and we will have a live show for you on Wednesday night to recap the 2021 Dallas Cowboys schedule. So make sure you subscribe to the blog and the boys YouTube channel so you don't miss any of that awesome action. But um, yeah, I mean, football's a business and the Cowboys drafted two defensive tackles. They drafted three defensive backs. They drafted three defensive linemen. If you want to throw Chauncey Golston in there, and they obviously have also signed a number of different players in free agency. And this actually uh, brings up a very great point. The Dallas Morning News is Michael Gelkin pointed this out on Twitter on Wednesday, uh, just reading his tweet, Cowboys wave, nose tackle Antoine Woods, a source confirmed. Woods sparked the defense's midseason improvement. Um, I suppose we could call it an improvement, whatever. But in 2020, when moved to starting lineup, team has added six defensive linemen since March, three from free agency, three draft picks, as we just talked about here. All six with at least 34-inch arms, length a Dan Quinn emphasis. You think about it, we've talked so much about height when it comes to the defensive back position and specifically a cornerback, but 
Dan Quinn wants some long arms, and sometimes teams operate this way in the NFL. They have physical profiles, and if you do not meet them, you cannot stick around. And while, you know, as it kind of already stood, Antoine Woods was kind of, again, the odd man out for the Dallas Cowboys at the defensive tackle position because in football, you always follow the money, and the money has now been spent on other positions regardless of Antoine's restricted free agent tender that he signed a couple of weeks ago. And so, yeah, it made sense. But it also made sense for Dan Quinn, again, specifically, Specifically, in terms of the physical profile that Antoine Woods has not lining up with what he wants to have in his prototypical defensive tackles. And so while that's unfortunate and Antoine Woods really gave a lot to the Dallas Cowboys, hopefully he catches on somewhere else. We can continue to root him on in his NFL career. I, I will say that it's a little bit scary to trust Dan Quinn. I get that. And obviously he's somebody who has not had a lot of success recently in terms of his stint with the Atlanta Falcons, but we all do believe in a couple of things. One, uh, the general Seattle scheme that Dan Quinn is bringing, obviously the Cowboys defense had a lot of success within it in 2018. And, you know, just kind of thinking out loud right now, that 2018 season for the Cowboys was predicated so much on the great and more specifically the versatile linebacker play that they got from both Jalen Smith and Leighton Vanderish, then a rookie who we're going to get to in a minute, by the way. And now the Cowboys have that infusion of young, lateral, side-to-side, -side, versatile, defensive talent at the linebacker position in Micah Parsons and Jabril Cox. And so this is a familiar scheme to the Dallas Cowboys and a familiar defensive philosophy. And so in that sense, it's fair to trust it. And the other thing is, while I get that maybe you're saying, why should we trust Dan Quinn? He's had a lot of failure as of late. He didn't amount to much with the Atlanta Falcons after the season they went to the Super Bowl. His defenses in Atlanta weren't that great. While I get that concern, I do think that if you're the Dallas Cowboys and you are going to go in the direction of Dan Quinn in terms of him manning your defense, you have to go in the direction of Dan Quinn in terms of him manning your defense. You have to go all in. You have to let this be the Dan Quinn defense. And while Mike Nolan didn't necessarily... Um, a lot of people thought didn't necessarily deserve to be a defensive coordinator last year. There was not really a lot to his name in terms of his recent NFL successes. They really never gave Mike Nolan a fair shake. And I'm not trying to say that Mike Nolan would have been a better defensive coordinator for any other, you know, rhyme or reason. But what I'm saying is if you're going to do this, be all in, be all in with Dan Quinn and go with his prototypes, go with the arm lengths that he wants a defensive tackle, go with the heights that he wants in your secondary, because that's what you hired. You hired Dan Quinn to do what Dan Quinn does. So trust in that. And ultimately that's either going to work out or it's not, but if you don't do it, then you're just wasting everybody's time. Um, so uh, hopefully, uh, like I said, hopefully Antoine Woods and, and Savion Smith and all the rest find jobs elsewhere in the NFL sometime soon. Uh, but the Dallas Cowboys did move on from them. Now, another move that the Cowboys made Made this week on Monday, actually. We've been talking about this a lot all throughout our live shows during the NFL draft. Uh, Leighton Vander Esch, as again, as mentioned, the Dallas Cowboys did draft Micah Parsons with the 12th overall pick after trading down from 10, and they drafted Jabril Cox with their first fourth round selection on Saturday. Again, very fast, very great, very versatile linebackers, guys that can run side to side, guys that can play in coverage. In fact, Jabril Cox, arguably the best coverage linebacker in the entire draft class. Leighton Vander Esch can't necessarily do that. Jalen Smith, we know, cannot do that. And while a lot of people want to see the Cowboys cut Jalen Smith, the reality is that his financial figures for 2021 are already guaranteed. You can't do anything in terms of Jalen Smith now that is productive. Moving on from him, while I get it, if you are fed up or if you had it up to here with Jalen Smith, Cutting him right now would not be a wise move on the Dallas Cowboys behalf. They just have to ride this thing out. ESPN's Todd Archer wrote this week about how 2022 is really going to be about one of them, Jalen Smith or Leighton Vanderish. And for him to write that is really a notable and significant thing. And we now know that 2022 is an interesting point in time because Leighton Vanderish is now in a contract year. On Monday was, you know, Monday was the deadline for NFL teams to pick up the fifth year options on 2018 first round picks, and the Dallas Cowboys did not not pick up the option for Leighton Vanderish. This, again, does mean that 2021 is the final year of Leighton Vanderish's rookie contract. Time will tell what happens here. Maybe he has a great season and the Cowboys let him walk and ultimately pick up a compensatory pick that would be for the 2023 season. Or maybe he's just another average linebacker like he's been for the last year and a half or so. Um, maybe he's unfortunately riddled with injuries. I mean, there's a lot, again, to kind of be afraid of here. Leighton's option value, if you were unaware, would have been 9.145 million dollars and because he was drafted in 2018 the 2018 first round class is the first to have their fifth year option values fully guaranteed that means the dallas cowboys would have been on the hook for all of that money nine million dollars plus in 2022 
in a situation where they now have two linebackers in Micah Parsons and Jabril Cox that in 2022 are going to be on their second year with the team. I think it's very possible that the Dallas Cowboys don't have either Leighton Van Der Esch or Jalen Smith on their team next season, but at the absolute most, it's going to be one of them. Now, uh, when the reports of the Cowboys declining Leighton's fifth-year option came out, all the reports said that the Cowboys would love to work out a long-term deal with him before next season, obviously. Yeah, they're not going to come out and say, look, we don't want anything to do with this guy forever. They're stuck with him for this year. But uh, the Cowboys saying, we're good on paying you $9 million fully guaranteed for next season. I mean, unless Leighton's willing to sign an absolute, you know, just ridiculously team-friendly deal for 2022 and beyond, I think it's really, really, really unlikely that the Cowboys are going to commit themselves to him. So it is very possible. I would honestly say it's probably 75 to 80% likely that this is Leighton Van Der Esch's last season with the Dallas Cowboys. And you know what? I know it's unfortunate, and I know it, you know time flies. It feels like yesterday that he was hunting wolves or whatever and howling all over the place. But this is an important step for the Dallas Cowboys. We have seen them unable to acknowledge sunk costs. We have seen the Cowboys with a sense of arrogance or a sense of hubris, however you want to term it, when it comes to decisions that they've made and kind of doubling down on them, even if they were not great decisions, but just because they didn't want to face the public backlash, they didn't want to maybe look themselves in the mirror and say it was a bad decision. It was not a great decision, we now know, for the Cowboys to take Jalen Smith with the 34th overall pick in the 2016 NFL Draft. It was an even worse decision to double down on that idea, although he did sign a team-friendly deal in the early parts of the 2019 season when they gave him that big contract. Those things are already done. And while they shouldn't have been done, just like it shouldn't have been a situation where they took Leighton Van Der Esch in the first round of 2018, those things have already been done. And instead of wallowing and just kind of hoping that they get better, I, I think the Cowboys deserve some props for – uh, you know, for admitting that and for saying, you know what, we we paid all this money, we spent these draft picks, and that sucks, and we wish that we could go back, but we're not just going to sit and let it be the situation that we're in forever. We're going to move on as soon as we can. And that's where this term purge comes from, because in the days since the NFL draft, let's count it out loud, going chronologically, the Cowboys, as mentioned, did not pick up the fifth-year option on Leighton Van Der Esch. And while maybe you don't think that's a big deal, that is the team demanding accountability from some players that they have hoisted up. And I know that Jalen Smith wasn't necessarily directly impacted by the move to decline Leighton's fifth-year option, but that is a shot. That is a shot at Leighton Van Der Esch and Jalen Smith, and those have arguably been the two players that have faced the least amount of accountability from the team over the course of the last two years. And so for the Cowboys to say, you know what, we're holding you accountable, we're holding your feet to the fire, it's time to really either play great or we're going to move on from you that shows some growth and while I'm not saying that the Cowboys are suddenly the most well-run team in the NFL this is a positive step in the right direction so kudos to the Cowboys in that regard and while I don't want to necessarily pick on Antoine Woods if we again put up the names the Cowboys released on Wednesday or waived I mean Antoine Woods is a fine player for them, but they are releasing him and saying, this is no longer what we want. We no longer want fine. We no want to just, you know, we no longer just want acceptable things. We want elite. And while I'm not saying that Osa Digizu or Quinton Bohana are elite options or elite commodities today, this is the Cowboys moving on from their kind of average moves that they've done. And look, when we started our live show on Tuesday night, we started it off by saying, should the Cowboys bring back Jeff Heath, who the Las Vegas Raiders released on Wednesday? And while I think there's a legitimate argument for that, I think the Cowboys passing on maybe doing that, and we'll see if they ultimately are interested or show any interest in Jeff Heath at the time of this recording, they haven't. But that is growth as well, because that is the Cowboys saying, you know what, those are the same comfortable things we've been doing forever and ever and ever, just kind of settling with players like Leighton Vanderich, settling with players that we've doubled down on already in Jalen Smith, settling with players like Antoine Woods, returning to players like Jeff Heath. I mean, Brandon Carr was a nice experiment for them to take this past year, but that didn't make any sense. And granted, it's not necessarily something that blew up in their face, but the Cowboys need to ultimately be a little bit more forward thinking. And I think that we're starting to see just some mild signs of that sort of disposition, which is very good to see in the long run. But to get to the ultimate place you want to get to, to get through that proverbial long run, you have to have that purge. The Cowboys are purging the average, low-quality talent from their defensive roster. They're being smart, finally, with some financial decisions that they have to make. The Cowboys cleared up about $2 million in cap space by moving on from Antoine Woods, and we'll see how they utilize that. The Dallas Morning News' is David Moore had a tweet about this. Maybe the Cowboys go out and get Joe Looney. We talked about that at the end of Tuesday night's live show here on the YouTube channel. I mean, the Cowboys did not really address the guard position in free agency 
Yes, they drafted Matt Farniak in the seventh round, but they still don't really have a whole lot of depth there. Do we believe in Tyler Biotish at center? Sure. Do we believe in Connor Williams at left guard? I don't really know. Do we believe in Connor McGovern as a viable piece of depth at guard or center? I definitely really don't know. Uh, but beyond that, Zach Martin has his own health concerns, and Joe Looney has flexibility at both center and guard. And so if you can be smart, if you can be efficient with your resources, and if you can ultimately move on from somebody like Antoine Woods and improve elsewhere, these are the types of things we've been asking to see from the Dallas Cowboys. And the fact that we are, again, is just it's a nice step. It doesn't mean celebrate. It doesn't mean go crazy. It doesn't mean that they're going to win the Super Bowl. But it does mean that at least they are changing their thinking on some basic fundamental fundamental level. So they've earned a little bit of a kudos from me uh, in this regard. Uh, the final thing for us to get to here today, very important information. Definitely don't want to, you know, bury the lead here. This is a super gigantic, important, awesome, just unbelievably large deal. This will affect your life forever, I promise. Uh, all kidding aside, we now know the jersey numbers for the Dallas Cowboys rookie draft class. As noted, the Dallas Cowboys took 11 players in the 2021 NFL draft, and they were assigned their jersey numbers on Wednesday afternoon. Micah Parsons, Jerry Jones intimated during Micah's introductory press conference last Friday, um, Jerry basically said that Micah Parsons was going to wear number 11. Now, obviously, the NFL now allows linebackers to wear numbers like 11 and still numbers in the single digits. I'm against this. I'm on record at that. But, you know, it is what it is. I have to accept it. Micah Parsons will, in fact, be wearing number 11. And apparently, Cedric Wilson, who also was tendered by the Cowboys this offseason, just like Antoine Woods, uh, who previously wore number 11, will be switching to number one, which he wore in college at the Dallas Cowboys' favorite university, and that is Boise State. Now, Hunter Nicewander, the Dallas Cowboys punter, who figures to be in line for the starting job now that Chris Jones is no longer a part of the team. Again, another level of purging that we've seen from the Cowboys this offseason. Uh, Hunter... I guess previously wore number one, so he will need a new number himself. So look at the domino effect, all right, of Micah Parsons getting the number that he wanted, the number 11. Uh, but this is the first instance of the Cowboys having somebody uh, have a jersey number that now is part of the NFL's expanded rules for players and jersey numbers. Cedric Wilson, obviously a part of that, wearing number one himself. Uh, Kelvin Joseph, the best number for a cornerback in the world, number 24. It doesn't get much better than that. We had Israel Mukuwamu on the show. We talked to him, go back in our YouTube channel. You can watch our interview with him. He's an incredible young man. Very great story. Really looking forward to watching him with the Dallas Cowboys himself. He did say that he kind of wanted to wear number 24. He was given number 38, uh, which might mean the Cowboys don't have any intentions of bringing back Jeff Heath. Um, 38 is a great safety number, and so hopefully Israel develops into that. Um, you know, it's it's a little weird. You know, I thought I thought 38 would be in consideration for retirement. Just kidding, all right, everybody. And no, the Jeff Heath thing is a great meme, so nobody take it seriously. Uh, but Israel Mukuwamu rocking number 38. Osa Adigizua given number 75. And fun fact here, this is actually the second year in a row that a Dallas Cowboys third-round rookie defensive tackle has been given the number 75. That's right. Neville Gallimore was originally given number 75, which was really funny because he did come from Oklahoma. We do a show on the Blog on the Voice podcast network with Tony Casillas, an Oklahoma defensive tackle who played for the Dallas Cowboys that wore number 75. That's how we call the show the 750. Uh, but Neville Gallimore switched when you know the season started because all these numbers that you see here, probably outside of Micah Parsons and a couple others, uh, they might change when you know these players make the 53-man roster. Other numbers will be available from players who were cut, and they might switch at that time. That's what Neville Gallimore did. He switched from 75 to 96, but Osa Digizua, maybe he will stick with number 75. Chauncey Goldston, where number 59 is an edge rusher, just not a great look. Hopefully, he gets a number in the 90 soon. To be fair, Antoine Woods' is 99 is now available. Maybe he switches to that. Uh, Nashawn Wright. Not a lot of Cowboys fans super pumped about this pick. Wearing number 40 does not help. It is not a great corner number, so hopefully he switches himself as well. Uh, 40, just not a good look. Jabril Cox, wearing number 48. Now, I'm not a fan of this, and if I'm a fan of any like trend that's becoming more popular in the NFL, it's these speedy, fast linebackers wearing numbers in the 40s. Obviously, you've got Deion Jones, you've got Devin White, um, so I can I can kind of get down with this. I'm not super pumped about it, but Jabril Cox wearing number 48. Shout out, of course, to Daryl Moose Johnston. Uh, Josh Ball wearing number 76 as the Cowboys' fourth-round offensive tackle. Simi Fajoko maybe is the winner from this whole bunch. Simi Fajoko wearing number 81. That is tough to beat. Please 
make number 81 great again. It has been a long time since the NFL had a great wide receiver wearing number 81, perhaps the best number for a wide receiver outside, of course, of number 88. Uh, we've obviously got, you know, Quentin Bohana wearing Tyrone Crawford's old number and number 98. So that is what it is. As mentioned, Israel Mukuwam is wearing number 38. And finally, Matt Farniak wearing number 68, just a standard guard number. So it is what it is. But like I said, very important information, all of this. And we will have all of the very important information that you need when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys right here on the Blog and the Boys YouTube channel. We don't sleep. In fact, I don't know what sleep is. 24-7, 365 coverage when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys. So make sure you subscribe right here so you don't miss a single thing. Make sure also to check out blogandtheboys.com. We have articles coming out all the time because we know that you need to stay updated on America's team, our favorite team. So we make sure that that is the case. I mentioned our podcast network. You can subscribe to the Blog and the Voice podcast on any major podcast platform, Apple devices, Spotify, search for Blog and the Voice, hit subscribe. If you can leave a rating, write a review. Those things make our hearts oh so happy. My name is RJ Ochoa. You can follow me on Twitter or Instagram at RJ Ochoa. And um, yeah, that about does it. Uh, oh yeah. Also, you can do me a favor and you can have the absolute best day of all time. You know why? Because you deserve it. We'll see you next time.